Welcome. This is Archaeological Music Research Meeting. This is our number three meeting. And it seems like it's going to be just me right now. And in this research, it's feel it's a it's how it is sometimes. Sometimes it is like that. Sometimes it only you, only me. And we're here and we'll save this for the future. And I want to take this opportunity to actually share a few things about archaeological music and the evolution of this game world and this space. Thank you for coming and joining and seeing this, wherever you are and whenever you are. Today is March 2nd of Thursday. And it's a sunny day over here. And I'm quite excited to be sharing some of these uh, some of these ideas, some of these uh, worlds that have been coming down and that have been powering uh, archaeological music. Archaeological music came originally from uh, a world called mu music thinking. That was a world that, that uh, I started about two years ago here in Vancouver Island in Canada. And it started as a program, a nature immersion program, where uh, the purpose of it was to bring out the music from within, like real, like bringing bananas, onions, windows, seagulls, and and shoes, bringing that realization that music is within each one of you and each it's inside inside the self the history of where music thinking came is from a whole evolutionary process of my own working and my own process with with music There, there is some key key parts key parts that came to it and basically when i came here to the island i met a group of people and i met a yeah a group of people that they were very interested in music and they were also musical musical people and they wanted to practice music we had the common common passion of music and nature so we will go and have meetings in nature and practice music. This was a practice that was also connected with the moon, with a deep connection and observation of the moon patterns. So we will go and connect with the moon on every quarter of the moon. So we will connect on the empty moon, then on the quarter of a moon, then on the full moon, and then on the empty quarter of the moon, and then again on the new moon. And we did this process for, I guess, about five to six months where we were uh, quarterly, like, and that bananas, onions, windows, shoes, and seagulls. We will meet quarterly. That will mean like once a week. Inside of these practices, we were connecting, and I was bringing out my my uh, my process of music and a special method that I learned from somebody in Mexico. And this is I call or he called the, this method the the method of the hand, and where he uses the hand to point out the different elements of music. And the benefit, uh, the power of, of this method of the hand is that is so simple it's really so simple that it englobes the, the the five different elements of music uh, my, my teacher bernardo he, he i met him in san cristobal de las casas chiapas in mexico that was in 2016 
And in there, I got, I went into an immersive space with him in his uh, space where he was living. And through the course of uh, a week, we shared different sessions where I got to see him playing music and he got to share music. He got to give me very quick feedback about the music that I was playing. And inside of these five weeks, he delivered that knowledge of the hand, the method of the hand, the five elements of music. <clears throat> In his process, he went like this. He said, get a notebook and uh, take it out. And what you're gonna do, is you're gonna put your hand, put your hand on it like that. Now I'm actually gonna do it here, just like he did it. Put your hand out in the notebook that way. And you, and this is how you can teach it to others. That's, this is how you can learn it yourself. Because he didn't tell me the, the method, the elements right away. He made me draw my hand. And then he didn't tell me the methods. He asked me, what do you think are the elements of music? And we, we did this while sitting down. So you end up with a hand shape like that. Can't really see if you can see it. And inside there, I, uh, he started asking me, what, what, what are the elements of music? And I don't remember quite well what I, what I said, except for a few a few of them. But I remember getting getting some of them, and he would he would point them out. And so, you can ask your your students or the people that you're coaching or you're showing this method. You can ask them about this question too. For this video, I'm gonna share uh, the elements and and. And then like sometimes, for example, people say tempo and that will fall into one of the one of the elements, right? So you can like get the people that you're coaching to tell you their what their met, what their elements are, and you can find the way into how they fit inside of these elements. And the element that I like to start with is the element of like the index in the index finger which is the individuality, the pointer, the individual, the one. And this is the element of the melody. So I'm gonna write it here. Melody. And the, the particular thing about the melody is that it's one note at a time. One note at a time is being played. So you play here is one by one. So one at a time. For example, you play a melodic instrument will be the flute is a natural melodic instrument because you can only play one note at a time. And there's actually some flutes that have double, double body. So double capacity to make sound. And this will be like start falling into more like harmonic, harmonic uh, sounds. But in general, the flutes that you know, they can make one note at a time. In, in contrast with a guitar, for example, a guitar and a keyboard, for example, they, play, they, they have the capacity to play many notes at the same time. With a guitar, you can play up to six notes at the same time, for example, because it has six different strings. And each one of these strings has the capacity to play a, a different note or a note. <clears throat> So the melody has this quality that is one at a time. And it's usually the, the storyteller. It's usually the, uh, the one that's telling the story is the one that's leading and the one that's like dictating the, the ups and downs and the, the, the moving of where it's going. And, and uh, you can say an example of melody you can make it with your own voice with your own uh, with your own sounds right for example uh, this will be an example of a melody Ooh, do, 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 yeah. 
to ma kwe wa sa ne je bo ne ne na wa sa je bo we ye u e ma no a u je wa we he he so this this is a melody because i i only have the capacity with my voice to play one note at a time um which takes us to the next element the middle finger the middle finger we're going to call harmony h a r m o n y and the quality of harmony is that is the backing of the melody is the the the, the ground like it can be the you can see it as the 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 plants that grow the plants that grow it's the the plane of the multiple notes uh, the plane of the multiple notes so it will be more than more than when you play more than three notes or when you play three notes or more at the same time and and the quality that a harmony has is that it backs off the melody so there is a melody that's playing like the one that i just did and, it, and behind it there will be a, a, um, a harmony that plays in the background that it will be more than three notes playing that you will you will have to do it with a, an instrument uh, but you can also have three people singing at the same time for example creating the harmony you can have a whole group of people singing at the same time, creating harmony. And this is when we enter into the, into the place of harmonics, of, which is the study of what notes sound good together and what are the qualities of certain notes playing together, okay, which takes us into the scales which will be like the, the major scale, the minor scale. Uh, you get the diminished, you get the augmented. And like this, so many others, so many other scales uh, of notes that play and have certain quality together. Some of these, a combinations some of these combinations they create a sense of of brightness for example it can be associated with happiness and joy in the major scale for example it's associated with light and and we even like fire and on the minor scales for example is associated with with more on the sad side and, and in the diminished or augmented, it creates certain tension. It creates a tension or a, <clears throat> or a difference that, <clears throat> I'm sorry, that has a different qualities. So in, inside of these combinations of different notes playing together, there is different qualities. So this can tell you quality uh, of sounds. By the way, I'm doing an experiment with my voice that every time I say like, I, I gotta say the words banana, seagull, window, shoe, and pencil as a way to bring awareness to when I'm, when I'm saying this word. So spare with me as I go through this experiment and hopefully the pain will become so big that I will stop myself from doing it unconsciously. So we, we've gone through the melody, which is one note at a time. We've gone through the harmony, which is more than three notes at a time playing together. Harmonious sounds when three, sound, three notes that are playing together and they sound 
harmonious together, you can sense inside of yourself the change in the space. You can feel it. You can feel really the change of what it is. And when we go to the, the third finger, this is the, the ring finger, the annular. This one we call the rhythm. And rhythm is a really fun word to spell. It only has one, uh, one, one vowel sound for so to say, but there is no, no vowels in this word actually, because there is a Y right in the middle. It's a R H Y D H M. And it's called rhythm. And I imagine it is probably one of the few words that don't have any vowels in it, but maybe I'm mistaken. I haven't checked this fact. And inside of rhythm, we have rhythm is cycles. Rhythm is the cycle of things. Rhythm is the, um, the repetition. Rhythm is the, the back, the backbone. Rhythm is the backbone of the of the music. That meaning if there is a, a song or a music that doesn't have a, a rhythm, it, it tends to fall out of what is considered as music. There is no structure to it. There is no, there is no organization of it. And the, this doesn't mean that that it has to be always at the same time, like clapping, dun, dun, dun. It doesn't mean that it has to be the same rhythm all the time, but that it has to have some rhythm and that all music, all sounds, all, all music has a certain kind of rhythm and it follows a, a certain kind of rhythm. <clears throat> and inside of rhythm, yeah, we have repetition, We have cycles. And they can be, for example, in the cycles, if you want to see cycles in nature, the sun is the, the biggest uh, shower of rhythm as it, it is, it has been showing that rhythm since I was born, for example. And I've been told that it has been doing that for a very long time. That every day the sun comes out from the east and it goes through the sky and it comes out, it goes out, it sets up in the in the west. And it does the same thing the next day, the next day, and the next day. And that it has been doing this for a very long time. And this brings trust. This brings a, a platform, a platform for life to, to emerge, a platform for, for music for for so to say it when you have a when i when i have when i hear a rhythm and that rhythm is playing consistently uh, then it becomes a platform for music to emerge other parts such as harmony and melody and an example of this will be uh, something very annoying like your alarm clock when your alarm clock goes out in the morning is a beep Beep, 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 beep. This becomes a rhythm or the alarm of a car. Beep, 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 beep. This becomes a rhythm that for, for some for some are annoying and I found it to be annoying sometimes. And sometimes it can become a platform to spontaneously, spontaneously create music from hearing that that pattern of rhythm you know that it's going to be going for a while and you don't know how to stop it you can't stop it sometimes because you don't have the the key control to stop it then it can be a, a platform for for music to to emerge <clears throat> and inside of the the rhythm cycles we have the most basic rhythm is the one by one which is a uh, if you count it if you're counting it will be like one one, 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 
one, one, one. And this can go uh, as fast and as slow uh, as you can imagine it. You can like speed it up. One, 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 one. And the magic of this one by one is that it, it, it becomes the key to understanding pretty much any other rhythm, any other rhythm that, that comes, uh, you can, it can be understood through this. And the, the one, the one by one rhythm is the, the rhythm that, that can allow you to get, uh, to start understanding the rhythm that you're in. For example, if there is a foreign rhythm that is playing, for example, like salsa, and bananas, apples, bananas, windows, shoes, pencils, and seagulls. For example, if there is a rhythm of salsa that is playing and you don't understand salsa, how is salsa work? I, I don't understand it. You can use the, the one by one rhythm to get to understand it because you can catch up to it. You can find like what is the you can find what is the, the quality of that rhythm what is the, the the speed of that rhythm just through tapping into this one by one and then it comes the two by two um, that will be this one two 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 and so on so one by one, two by two, uh, three by three will be one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. An example of one, two, three music will be waltz. The waltz is a one, two, three pattern. Two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. One, two, three. Two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. And I can share some examples about this. Uh, a waltz that is that is common that maybe you have heard is this one. <clears throat> la da 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 of course, that's not perfect. So I'm not a waltz musician, but you, you can get the sense of what this is. The waltz is following that one, two, three pattern. Then we go to the four by four. The four by four being, being most of the music that, that we are accustomed to, most of the modern, modern culture music, most of the rock, music that we heard uh, i'm gonna guess the approximately like 80 uh, percent to 90 percent of the music that we heard is four by four is the it's connected with the the patriarch patriarchy and that that for the stability that is brought by the the father figure that is a one two three four one two Four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. And I'm, I'm thinking if there is any examples on this, there is probably so many. And I can't think of any right now, but you can pick any and you will probably uh, be falling into one of these uh, one, two, three, four patterns. <clears throat> And so this is the, the reading part, the reading aspect of, of yeah. music. And so far we have a melody uh, here on the first finger, 
we have harmony on the middle finger and we have rhythm on the fourth finger on the on the third finger the annular and last this is this one it took me i wasn't able to guess this one when maestro bernardo was asking me about the elements of music but there is, I, there is some hints to it i was i was thinking pitch or volume and he shared with me uh, the fourth element of music is silence and the way that silence works is that it's so ingrained and it is so difficult to associate silence with music but in fact it is uh, interconnected is deeply connected with everything that is happening right now and in music in music it's happening that is um, the the spaces in between is it in the spaces in between everything so even inside of this rhythm even inside of the harmony and the melody there are there are spaces in between where when the sound changes from one to another there is a space in between there is some rhythms that for example uh, if you're playing a, a four by four rhythm you will be and one of those uh, one of those is silence then you can say like one two four one two four one two four wa pa mm, four pa pa mm, four pa pa mm, four pa pa mm, four pa pa mm, four and and that silence is in between all of the music, any music, sometimes there is pauses, sometimes there is a pause in between that gets repeated and that pause, that silence, uh, it, sometimes there is breathing in that creates a, that silence and the other silence. So this will be the in-between, I will call it the in-between spaces. And the other aspect where silence is in is uh, at the end of the song, at the end of the music, when the music ends, there is a, the beginning. At the beginning, just before the beginning, there was silence. And after, after the music is done, there is also silence. Once uh, the song is finished, there is silence. So this silence calls for the beginning and ending. So the beginning, the ending, and the in-betweens. An example of this in nature will be the nighttime. The nighttime, when the nighttime, there is no sun. So there is, for example, there is no that sound being made. <clears throat> and an example of this in, the, in nature will be also the seasons. Uh, if we consider winter, to be that, that time when there is the, the least sun. If we look at it in nature again, we can see in, in the cycles of the moon, this happens as well with the empty moon, that will be the silence and the approaching to silence, reaching silence and then starting again. So these are like, these are very uh, bananas, uh, windows, shoes and pencils and seagulls. These are elements that are ingrained not only in, in music, but that they're also part of nature, part of observation of nature. My Maestro Bernardo, he shared that all of the music came from the birds and the observation of nature. And I've seen definitely this I've seen this happening through my own immersion in, in nature when I'm observing the, the ocean, for example, and seeing the, the water, how they ripple the waves, how they come and create a sound, a rhythmic sound. And even with a nighttime with the frogs singing, 
with the birds singing, they create a sound, they create a certain pattern. The looms and the, the eagles, the, the roosters, each one of them, they have a, a call that inspires the, the soul and inspires the inspires music to 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 be created and this leaves the the last element over here on the tom we have four elements so far and then the tom um this one was difficult for me to guess the only thing that i that was left for me was feelings and uh, this is what I told Maestro Bernardo. I told, is it feelings? Is it a feeling? You need a feeling to play the music, right? And he said, you're close. Uh, what is that feeling? And again, I wasn't able to guess. And he ended, he ended up telling me that feeling is love. El amor. In Spanish, it's amor. So that he had something very big to say about this he had something very special to say about love he said he spoke from his own experience and from seeing what had happened to him and to many other people in playing music in his over 60 years of experience of playing music he he's a man that had been in different places of the world he had a, a million, multi-million dollar house and a family in Europe. He had a band where he, that he was touring with. He had it all. He had it all in terms of that success of music. He went to he went to university for music. He studied music in university for a long time. And he expressed that he had been playing music since he was five years old, that he learned how to play guitar almost before he was able to, to speak or do other things. Uh, that his family, they were very highly musicians. And he, he shared a lot, of, a lot of these different stories uh, with me in, during that time that I shared with him. And he spoke about love. He, he said, any, any other, anything other than love that you use to create music with, it will destroy you. If you use, if you use hatred, for example, to create music, if you use a competition to create music, it will destroy you and it will destroy you quite quickly and efficiently. Jorge, he said, when you're making music, remember, make it with love. Don't make it with anything else. Make it with love. And he pointed up. And this day with me, I didn't know so much what it meant at the time, but I could have an intuition of, yes, I, I can feel into that. I can feel how it's such a powerful tool that uh, if not used with the right intention, it can destroy the, the user. And this has been a guiding aspect for me inside of what my, the making of music and the creation of music. And I can see this being one of the guiding aspects of archaeological music and next culture music. And this to me speaks to the bright principles to use with the possibility management language and context. This will be create music from your bright principles. That is love, clarity, connection, communication, kindness, transformation, discovery. There is all of these bright principles aspects. So love being a in that center that it creates a, that, that spark from that center of conscious of conscious of consciousness and evolution and not from a place of unconscious especially like well not especially like all of the bananas 
uh, shoes, uh, windows, pencils, and seagulls. All, all of the shadow principles and unconscious principles. And what I've noticed so far in my creation of, of, of music is that it's never perfect. It's never always love. And it's never always bright principle. It's not always conscious principles. But that there is a, a transition towards it. It's a going towards it. It's a dance. It is a dance of the shadow principles and, and the bright principles. It is a dance of the unconscious and the conscious. And I, I imagine what Bernardo was saying when he explained to me this method is that that is the transition to go, go towards love, move towards love, move towards consciousness, move towards being more conscious. And, and that is the, that, that, fifth, that fifth element that completes the five elements. Five elements of music. It's a little bit it inverse. Yeah, you can get the 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 picture. So these are the five elements of music. We have melody, harmony, rhythm, silence, and love. <clears throat> and yeah, love being that dance, that dance in between the the unconscious and the conscious of uh, perhaps something starts uh, as unconscious and there is that practice and that yearning to bring clarity, to bring uh, awareness, to bring, to bring it to the conscious side, to let it not be something that divide us, divides us, but that brings us together, to not let it be something that makes us right or makes us wrong, but that it brings a space of discovery and a space of tr truthfulness or trustworthiness. And so, when we combine all of these elements together, we get archiarchal music, we get next culture music, as you can as you can see this this one this fifth element is a very determining of of what how modern culture has been using has been using music modern culture has been using music not from a place of love but as you can see as a place of competition from a place of right and wrong saying who's right and who's wrong from saying what's good and what's bad, for placing blame, placing judgment, placing guilt onto others, for standing on on the on the on one good side and putting the others on the bad side. <clears throat> so in this way, music has been abused. And music has uh, has is destroying the world. Music is being used for whoever is listening to that music is is falling into that manipulation and, and falling into that only what side one side of things. If the if the music that is being played is is held on onto that one side of things, for for example, only the only the unconscious, then it creates a destruction and the, the consumption. It's no, it's a, like like bananas, shoes, pencils, windows, and seagulls. Is on not it's not sustainable, and it it doesn't it doesn't create a next culture music. It doesn't create music that is permaculture sustainable that is fully and holy. And I can, I can feel a, a sense that if it's only love or if it's only conscious, it can be also 
on that on that side of things that is not it feels um, rehearsed it feels uh, that is only showing one side of things and not showing uh, the whole uh, the whole picture and so yeah i see i see like like a dance i see it's it's a dance in between between the two and bringing conscious to to the to whatever is coming that is unconscious and so that's the five elements of music this is what maestro bernardo showed me and and the where music thinking and eventually archaeological music where they sprung from after that i kept playing the music and learning music and lots of more insights came and more development of it and it wasn't uh, after two or two or three years after that i was able to bring this into uh, um, a method for me to teach it and here in in vancouver island where i live now is where i was able to share it with others and after sharing it with with other people they express the value of it how valuable it was for for them to to receive that that knowledge in terms of their evolution with music and in their evolution as a music coach or a music trainer even for little for little people like young young people they were able to absorb this this knowledge very quickly and and make a, a re reclaim reclaim their music reclaim the music uh, as a as a tool that is in their hands that is not something that the teacher tells you what is music but that is something that is in your hand and that is at your reach that you can you can have access to it and that this is when i started putting more more time into developing this method then after in in fall in the last fall in 2020 so that was approximately uh, six to seven months ago when i discovered the the context of possibility management when i learned about the game worlds learn about the 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 distinction of a game world a modern culture game world and next culture game world and radical responsibility it took a shift into about in the music thinking and music thinking actually became a game world that it wasn't there before it, it was a notes in my notebook and and things that i had shared with other people and music thinking uh, took life in my strikingly in the platform of my strikingly in the form of a, a game world that had a, a context and had different uh, elements to it. And this is when it took life uh, as, a, as a game world, uh, as part of next culture. And so after that, uh, I, I showed it to some people in the possibility management uh, uh, world and it, it got received very well people were saying yes we need we need music we need music in in this in this next culture and i said all right let's bring it i love it and and at that point it is not something that is mine anymore it was something that was received with love and uh, and it was given to the creative commons for it to be continue developing from music thinking it quickly evolved to uh, the name of conscious music because obviously like thinking it was only in the one of the fifth bodies the the element the intellectual body and and is not uh, is not capturing the the totality of what 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 the method is and which is a, a five body experience this is a five body experience uh, when you include those five five elements so it evolved to conscious music 
or feelings music and then archaeological music and next culture music as well. And so the, the meeting started, meetings, uh, hold on, I'm gonna close some things here because this is slowing down. So this is how the, the music thinking evolved into a different name of conscious music and archaeological music, next culture music. And I open it up for, for other researchers to come and collaborate and to start helping the creation of, of this, what is next, next culture music. And this has been something that many others have been already in their work and have been already doing for perhaps many years. And I'm happy to have arrived here and to be working on this uh, game world. There is a, a few more things that I, I would like to share that have been perhaps discoveries and things that that we have found in the in the meetings for research. <clears throat> one, I'll start with this one that just so I can get it out of my out of my head. This is a transition, and it's a, it actually works with a conscious anger, and as a way to deliver um, deliver this hand method to some to somebody or to. To, to is the is is something to transform something that has been uh, appropriated by by modern culture and it's about the middle finger it's about harmony and well what happens when you do this in in modern culture this is a very offensive thing to do to someone if you do this to someone is well like like the energy in the space completely changes and the eyes open or or the, the things, the face goes like this. And if you do two, it's double, like you like, you get more. And, and say like, what's happening? And this is as a, as a space holder in sensing the, the quality of the space, you can sense when things are not harmonious. You can sense like some something is not harmonious in this space. And as a way to communicate with the space and perhaps with other possibilitators in the space or, or, or other space holders, you can uh, use this as a way to, something is not right with harmony. What's up with harmony? Harmony, and when, when the harmony keeps happening, we can bring it up again. Harmony, harmony is, Let's bring harmony. And of course, the, that sign for somebody that, that doesn't understand it, it will be like completely emotionally triggering. But for, for uh, next culture music, this, this means harmony. And, and I'm still figuring it out how to use it in a way that, also, that it doesn't fire back. But uh, I think it can be a really fun thing to play with. Uh, and to take back that obscene, that obscene thing, or that that like taking this uh, as a, something negative and something offensive. That I'm gonna offend you. I'm gonna show you the, the middle finger. So this will be uh, like a penis, like, right? That's what my grandma told me. My grandma showed me how to do this when I was a, a young guy, and she told me, "These are the balls, and this is the penis, right? You're making a penis, and you're giving the penis, you're showing the penis to somebody." And it's a way to reclaiming back that that like hugely emotionally charged uh, gesture for something that is uh, that can deliver um, a new a new possibility and that can open up new possibilities. That's one of the exciting things I wanted to share with you about the the middle finger harmony um, and also you can use the, the fingers 
uh, also to make other signs like harmony will just be one of them, uh, but you can sense inside of the space uh, about love, like if it's feeling like, it, like it's a conscious uh, shoes, uh, windows, seagulls, bananas, and pencils. You can sense if the space, if it's feeling conscious, it's feeling bright, and this will be saying, yes, it feels bright, or this, it feels too unconscious, it feels like it's shadow, uh, and this feeling that is a, an in-between, that's something in-between. So we can use these signs as a next culture music coaches or music trainers when we're coaching somebody uh, or when we are in a in a music uh, group in a music group we can also use these terms to to point how, how we're feeling the space uh, this also being the melody melody for example this could be we need we need melody or we loving the melody Yes, the melody is going well. Keep it going. Go, 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 melody. And this can be um, like bringing, like bringing a melody. Anyways, this this can all be uh, signs that that can be used in a music group for signaling signaling each other. This can mean silence, like silence, silence silence so inside of these five met five five elements we have different signs that we can make uh, with with our with our sign with our language silent language when i was showing uh, my my finger to a friend that wasn't aware of that he he replied back he he, he went like this but i noticed that his thumb was sticking out and I say, what's up with your love? Well, how come it's sticking out? And then I, I notice how, <laughs> how everyone has a different way of doing this. My grandma, she will do it like this, for example. And then I, I do it like this. My grandma will do it like this. And this friend of mine, he was doing like this. And I think it, it's funny how each one of these is different. The other... The other, so that would be like about hand signs. The other discovery that I encountered a few days ago was about the name of the band. Usually when you're uh, in a music group, you, it's called a music band, music band. And I, I was researching, I was researching this, where this word came from. Um, and I encountered that it, it's about a, a group of birds. That this is a, a band can be a, a group of birds, uh, but it, it was a specific to one group of birds. It was a group of J, J birds, which are some kind of black and blue birds. And they make very high pitched sounds and they're called a band. A band, when you see a group of J birds, they are a band, and I discovered that the most common way, uh, the most common name for a group of birds, what is it when you see a group of birds? It's a flock, and just like this, there is a a huge a huge list of different different bird names for each for different groups of birds. They have different names. For example, a group of crows or a group of ravens is called a murder. A group of owls, I believe is called something like council. And, and so like this, uh, different groups of birds have different names. Uh, so I thought for next culture, uh, the, the most appropriate name will be uh, a music flock. So it will be, that will be a group of musicians, a music flock, and opening up the possibilities for for other names that can like create more specific names depending on the on the band 
and the group of band that the the type of birds that are playing in that band. And uh, I will post a, a list of my research findings, so the different names that I found for each group of birds. So yeah, I'm switching between either I'm either calling it a music group or a music flock. So from band to flock. I want to talk about stage fright. A stage fright is a section inside of the archaeological music website that is yet to be developed. And it is it is currently what is being developed right now most more most uh, most adamantly. It seems like it seems that is that that pain and that, that fear that we all have collectively in terms of music, in terms of like showing ourselves with our voice, with our sounds. And the research for me, one of the main research for me inside of the meeting with others, meetings with my, my brother and with, with the other people that have been in the meetings is researching this stage fright. And in, in holding EHPs for, for fears and emotions around music. The goal for me is to find uh, to continue developing that program or the experiments for escaping stage fright and going into stage delight. When you are not consuming and being consumed by the stage or by the space, and you are nurturing yourself and others from being in the stage. You are in the stage, it's not something that is draining you and taking your energy out, but that is something that is giving you and you're giving back and you're receiving and you're giving back and you're receiving and you're giving back. And, and this becoming a practice of becoming comfortable with your uncomfortable, becoming uh, acquainted with your own fear, with your own uh, tendencies to contract and to pull out and to learn how to breathe inside of, inside of the stage, whether, whether it is one person that you are with, whether it's five people, 20 people, or a thousand, or even 500, thousand people, a million people. Even the, the whole world at this point can be a, a stage uh, with the possibilities of the internet. Uh, a million people could be watching this and getting acquainted, getting to know your fear and your emotions uh, inside of the, your stage fright is the key to unlocking, unlocking your true power and, and, and activating your archetypal forces inside of yourself to become a force of that can use your voice in a way that is so powerful and so nurturing and so creative and and also consciously can be destructive like in a way of destroying something and your own your own voice is powerful when we combine it together in a way that is complementary that is harmonious and intentionally complementary i don't even know what is possible is is beyond my my comprehension and 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 is this is is beyond beyond rational beyond what rational thoughts can can do or or thinking or words because when when we're sharing words we have to stop talking often to listen to what the other person is saying and to understand. But when we are with music and when we are in music expression, we can be doing both. We can be channeling, we can be using our voice. You can be expressing ourselves musically while we're listening to others. And if we hold inside of ourselves the, the conscious principles, the bright principles, then we can, 
become a, a force that is incredibly powerful so so powerful that i don't know what is possible and these are, i'm very excited about to find those ways that that we can uh, escape uh, the bounds and the limitations of verbal reality that is i i speak then i i be quiet then you speak then you be quiet and the others speak then they be quiet and this being a way of, of separating and being individualized to a, a way of all of us all of us bringing our voices together in harmony and in expression in full expression of 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 our feelings of our conscious feelings of our anger we can all channel our anger at the same time and use our voice and to the maximum to see to 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 create something consciously with that we can in the same way use uh, our our voices and use our music to create uh, sadness to to uh, to to use our, our sadness conscious sadness and our conscious joy or conscious fear to to create i want to keep saying this channel word but it is not really channel is a state of listening and expressing and expressing your own your own feelings of the field that is being created in that moment with the people that are there knowing that you all want to express and you all want to unite your voices that you all want to create a, a unified field that is not limited to to reason and logic and words but is connected to bringing our archetypal forces together to create a change uh, for ourselves and uh, for the world outside and these are uh, the possibilities for this they really go beyond my comprehension i don't I'm looking forward to seeing that that development and that comes from exploring our stage fright and exploring what makes us scared about uh, sharing our music. There is a, a work talk that I'm that I'm starting to prepare where I want to uh, work with others. Uh, get a, a body to to deliver uh, work talks for next culture music and get to explore more deeply create those spaces where we can continue this discovery and also doing uh, emotional healing processes uh, related around music related with music about our, our fears with music our our own our own blockages of our of our expression and this there has also been in the last meetings uh, we've been talking about how does music how does next culture music integrate into the already existing exp spaces and it was talk about rage club and um, i'm seeing something that is called mu uh, mu music rage club uh, music i can't remember the name but it's pretty much bringing music to to the rage club to to using that that voice uh, that rage for creating music. And there is also some, some experiments uh, in the possibility management bubble of websites. For example, in the uh, use your real voice, your real voice, I think it's called, uh, that has some experiments in it that are for the purpose of untapping and unleashing your voice. And the, 
there is a, other experiments. One is called, or it's a spark that is called sing until your song sings you or something to this regard that is also a very initiatory process into unleashing unleashing your the voice of the power of your voice with with song and with music and archaeological music and the research of the archaeological music archaeological music and the hand method being a complementary thing to all to everything all of this that that is coming uh, and I have so much more that I, I would like to share and I want to open that space for these discoveries to happening and for all of the other experiences that you've also had to be brought into this space. Uh, I'm looking forward for creating that work talk where we can meet and start the these conversations together and start developing more and actually bringing, creating our, our music flock or music group and bringing in these distinctions, these new distinctions to, to the music that we create. That's what I want to share for you with you for now. Thank you for hearing me. And this is it for now. This is our meeting of archaeological music and I hope to see you next week. And good luck with your music. Thank you.